allegations of racism have surfaced at the Johannesburg Metro Police Department. A group of traffic wardens in the extended public works program have accused management of sidelining them for permanent posts based on their race. Well, the allegations emerging over the weekend in a video that has been widely shared on social media. Let's uh, get some perspective now. And Zinigo Mshaba is following this story for us. Zinigo, good morning to you once again. I understand you're going to be talking to someone who's going to try and explain exactly what could have been the process here to disqualify, if you will, uh, these members. So take it away. Yes, Paul, you are actually at the Johannesburg City Council now. That's where our station. Remember, this is where uh, laws are made, especially at the city level or at the local government municipality. So that's where we are. Uh, I'm joined now by uh, Herman um, Pretorius from International Race, uh, Race Relations, going to speak to us about how we should be dealing with matters, especially when it comes to policies that are race sensitive, but also how much does race matter um, in South Africa now, 23 years, in 2023, over 30 years in a democratic South Africa. So how we should be handling these matters. We know that um, these young people were actually not, might, might not have been even informed about the policy which is called uh, employment equity. So in the absence of that understanding, how should this be handled, how it could have been handled, and what should be the next step now. But Mr. Pretorius, let me start with that issue. Does, how, much race, how much race is still a factor in South Africa? How much do we care about race matters in South Africa, especially when it comes to employment, especially when it comes to affiliations, uh, whether it's politics or, or in sport? From your work that you've done, um, different polls, do you think South Africans still care about race issues, about race considerations on whatever matters we're dealing with? I think so. Um, but we have to put it in context. Uh, over the last 15 years, the IRR, we do polling on a yearly basis, and we try to understand race relations in South Africa and priorities. And the interesting thing about the question of race is it really ranks low every time we poll. The questions that really rank high as the issues, the priorities that people care about is corruption, unemployment, housing, GBV. These are the things that people really want us and the government to focus on. Race is usually last or second last in the priority ranking. So while I think it matters, given our history, we should understand that there are various levels of something mattering. Something can matter because we have to deal with the socioeconomic reality of something like apartheid. But that doesn't necessarily mean that race-based policies is the answer to a history of race-based policies. We have these young people who were voluntarily you know, uh, hustling, looking for jobs, and they enrolled on this particular service, seeking jobs. And then, when it was time for them to apply for permanent jobs, then the race matter came out, and it became an issue for them. One would say they did not understand the law that existed that says we need to balance up the scale. So, do you think we've been handling sensitive um, policies that are sensitive to race in a most effective way that is made to be understandable by an ordinary person? Because if I'm also a young person, I want a job, I won't care whether there's a policy that I must read before I apply for a job or not. So, how has this been handled and how can it be handled better? I think we have to look at the evidence. And BEE and employment equity, these things started 20 years ago. Round about 2004 to 2007 was when this legislation came out the first time. And today, black unemployment, youth unemployment, overall unemployment is worse today than it was then. So that's not necessarily to say that these things caused unemployment to get worse, but it certainly didn't get better. At the end of the day, we have to ask ourselves, what obstacles are there in the way for anyone, whether they look like you or me, to get a job? We, we are struggling with an economic crisis where young people 
can't get into the work market. We have amongst the highest unemployment, youth unemployment rates in the world. So every single thing, whether it's race, whether it's licensing, we have to really reconsider whether these things are obstacles or whether they are helping in some way. And the problem is when we look at something like a service that must be delivered, the Zondo Commission report stated it quite clearly that any government entity department has an obligation to make sure it delivers on its mandate and it cannot put race or transformation as an excuse there. So, so how do you then balance the numbers out? Because um, according to the employment equity, in terms of ratios, the majority of young people in this country who are unemployed are black. And then there are Indians, then there are colors, there are all other races. So when you look at that ratio, that black people are the most affected people by unemployment. So how do you then, within that context, find that balance of trying to ensure that you balance things out so that you do not maybe equally employ everyone, whereas there's a greater race that is mostly affected. So how do you deal with that then? There are two types of inequality that we have to deal with. Either inequality of opportunity or inequality of outcome. Now the problem with tinkering with inequality of outcome is it doesn't really tell you whether things have gotten better. It's like giving someone a pain pill but not treating a broken leg. The real thing that we need to look at is opportunities. Do all South Africans, whether they are black, colored, white, doesn't matter, do they have access to that opportunity? That is the way to really redress the past. We cannot for 20 years say the answer to race-based policy is more race-based policies. At some point we have to go and take a step back and look what works. And the question here is, is there something in the way of someone getting a job? If there is, it needs to go. There are more important things here. If we want to look at how we can ensure that the legacy of apartheid is destroyed, dismantled, made something of the past, the best way to do that is not to try and figure out how the outcomes must be the same, but how we can give young people of all races the opportunity to build that life that for generations was denied under apartheid. So we have to do it with the right focus. What works must, what be, must be the focus. We shouldn't judge policies by their intentions but by the outcomes. But now, that opportunity you spoke about earlier on, that at least give the, the, the mostly marginalized people an opportunity first and preference um, in, that, in, in that regard. One will say, if maybe I've got five young people, and historically, white three South Africans have been employed, I've got these ten young people who do not have any opportunities, who have never had opportunities to employment, to decent employment, would it, would it be wrong for government to come up with the policy that says, well guys, let's still, let's start by addressing the mostly or previously, or previously disadvantaged young people, let's give them that opportunity so that they can be at the equal ground, so that we're able then to, to say, let's ignore race background, let's, let's ignore racial policies before. So what What's wrong with then with starting balancing up the scale so that we all start on equal ground? Will that be a wrong approach, or what is wrong with that approach? So I think there's In just a minute, sorry. There, there's no problem with trying to redress imbalance. The problem with race is it's not a very good measurement. According to the laws of this country, our president is a black man, a billionaire, the president, and still disadvantaged. If we want to really look at how we can empower those who need. Um, opportunity. Mm -hmm. It's not about race. And the IRR has this policy of economic empowerment for the disadvantaged that looks as whether you are coming from a poor background, not a black background or a white background. That's the way to go. Thank you very much, Mr. Pretorius. Thank you. Mr. Pretorius there from the International Race Relations, giving us a context of how South Africans are sensitive to race matters when it comes to employment, but also coming out very clear there is that South Africans do not really care about what, um, what race one is, but also the quality of the service um, they are provided with. So that's the latest one from us here at the Johannesburg Council. Back to you. Thank you very much for that update.